Mike, could you just elaborate a little bit more about malolactic fermentation, please, and why you choose to do it and why it's important with, with uh, sparkling wines? We do it on 100% of our wines because we start with the mass of structure, which is um, probably, I think, probably we have slightly more malic acid than in champagne, but of course champagne is done with the majority of wines as well. From my point of view, it brings the any it takes any unripeness out of the grape because malic acid is a sign of unripeness rather than a, a sign of ripeness. Um, it, it's lower as it gets cooler. The acidity of uh, malic acid is much harsher and too harsh in my opinion. Um, I do not like lots on particularly because it is too acidic. I like apples, but you know, they've got to be quite right for me, but that's my personal choice. But what I do like is that bringing them down consistently, we can get to 8 or 9 grams per litre total acidity by taking the malic acid out. And that's what the process of malolactic fermentation does. Having fermented the wine here, the wine is then, while it is if it's fermented within about 10 days, while it's just finished, it's um, alcoholic fermentation, we will have been culturing up some bacteria to add into, those, into that wine. Bacteria converts the lactic, malic acid into lactic acid. Now, to me, the lactic acid actually brings body into the wine, softness into the wine, um, and to some extent, it's got to be carefully done so you don't get sort of cheesy rancid flavours and things like that, but you can get this creamy addition to the flavours and the mouthfeel of the wine. I certainly would not really want to do, uh, we, we, one year we had it, malolactic acid, the malolactic fermentation is extraordinarily difficult to do on white wine. With red wine it's virtually, virtually 100% because it's actually almost you can't stop it because it's natural, the acidity is much lower, um, <coughs> the pH is significantly higher. As soon as the pH falls below 3.2, malic acid bacteria do not like to work. And our wines are often picked at 2.8, 2.93. And in fact, we, we think we've got a bit of a uh, peculiar year if we get to anything like 3.2 from the grape juice that we've got. So you have buy culture bacteria and then add it to We to buy all of our cultures from Champagne, uh, they're dried and we then have to, what you have to do is to, over three weeks effectively, you have to build that culture up so that there's plenty of, enough active bacteria working so it can then withstand the shock of going into alcohol and lower pH problem. Do you, do you have a similar pH to Champagne wines? Yes. Very much so. I mean, the, in Champagne, you know, the desire is to have finished wine that comes out between 3 and 3.10. And that's where I last tend to stay. I mean, yes, 3.15, 3.2.